There are a lot of tameable creatures in Ark Survival Ascended. In this video, I'll be showcasing the best 20 creatures with unique special abilities that you need to tame. So let's not mess around and let's get straight into it. Kicking things off is going to be the Parasaur, and they have two extremely useful abilities at their disposal. The first one being their Honk ability. Once used, it can temporarily scare away a wide variety of smaller predators. This can be extremely useful when running into danger when exploring, giving you and your Parasaur the chance to flee or to turn the battle in your favour. The Parasaur is a starter tame at heart, however it is used by a wide variety of players even at the end game, due to its second ability being a portable radar. This ability can be used by the player when riding the Parasaur or it can be used in turret mode when accessing the Parasaur's radial menu, where you can change the targeting settings, they can detect anything from players to tamed and wild creatures. When the Parasaur detects an enemy, a red ping will be visible on screen alerting you to the enemy presence. They do however consume a lot of food when in turret mode, so you gotta be wary of that. And this is why the Parasaur is an extremely common pick, whether it be PvE or PvP. The Lystrosaurus is equipped with a unique ability that makes it extremely useful to have around your base. Once you pet the Lystrosaurus, it will give nearby tame creatures an XP buff that lasts for around 5 minutes. Any affected creatures will have this symbol above their name. This buff multiplies all XP gains by 1.35. In PvP, pet your Lystro and slaughter a bunch of babies to reward your creature with a load of XP. In PvE, the best way to utilize them is with tribates. Have a tribate sit on the creature you want to level up. In this case, I'm using the grinder to grind up a load of stone into flint, which gives a lot of XP. My wife is sat on the Daedon, and as you can see, it's leveling it up quite quickly. Being as your tribate sat on the creature, it rewards the creature with the shared XP. The Carcharodontosaurus is equipped with quite possibly the strongest ability in the entire game, which is Blood Rage. But there are a few buffs along the way that the Carca receives that will contribute to it getting to its full Blood Rage potential. With every bite the Carca lands, a passive will also be applied which is called Shredded. This will reduce healing the victim receives from any source. Killing Frenzy is also a buff it receives whenever landing a fatal blow. The buff will last for 10 seconds which boosts movement speed and makes the Carca immune to stuns for the duration. And with every kill will refresh the Killing Frenzy's timer. And finally let's talk about Blood Rage. With every kill the Carca gains, the more damage it deals and the quicker it regenerates generates its health, with every kill adding onto its kill counter at the bottom of the screen. Once that reaches 100, the Karka gains 175% increased damage and healing rate, which turns it into a whole different beast. And if you for some reason don't want your Blood Rage counter anymore, you can roar it all away to give the incited buff to nearby allies, but not the Karka itself. Any affected allies will gain a temporary movement speed bonus. The Dumb Beetle is an extremely important creature to tame when setting up a greenhouse and growing crops. It will convert feces, placing its inventory into fertilizer and oil. Firstly, you will need to access them and stick them on Wanda for them to begin converting poop and throw them in a wooden cage so they don't go wandering off. And the great thing about the Dung Beetle in ASA is that they now come with the option to enable feces collection. So no more running around your base picking up poop or maybe not even ramming so many stimberries down your Fiomia's throats. The Dung Beetles will now pick up any poo in your base automatically. They will also keep picking up poop and exceed their weight capacity. This feature alone has made life so much easier for us. You can't go wrong with that. This leads us on perfectly to the next creature which is going to be the Oviraptor, which is also another great addition to any base or any farm. One ability includes boosting egg production. What you want to do is fill up your Oviraptor with something heavy like stone to the point that they can't move. Access the radial menu and enable wandering. This will boost the egg production of any nearby female tame creatures. Any affected creatures will have an egg symbol next to their name and just just like the Dumbbell, the Oviraptor now has a new feature where it will automatically pick up fertilized and non-fertilized eggs in the area. When accessing your Oviraptor's radial menu, you'll now see the egg collection option, where you can pick what types of eggs your Oviraptor will automatically collect. And just like the Dumb Beetle, it will keep on collecting eggs way past its weight capacity. You can also use the Oviraptor to steal fertilized eggs in the wild without aggroing the parents. However, being as we only have the island map and no DLC creatures, there are currently no wild creatures creatures that will lay fertilized eggs for the oviraptor to perform this action. Adding on to the collection of base farming creatures we have the Akatina, which when set to wander will produce Akatina paste and organic polymer, with Akatina paste being a direct substitute of cementing paste. They work the exact same way as a dung beetle, stick them on wander then throw them in a cage. If you plan on taming more than one be sure to spay them as you don't want them to constantly make babies when on wander. When wandering is enabled they will passively produce one Akatina paste per minute which caps at 
about 100 in their inventory, which will have to take out for them to begin making more. They will also passively produce one organic polymer every 60 minutes and increase the spore timer for organic polymer by three times. This makes the Akatina an important team to own. Anything that passively produces resources is a win-win in my book. The Daedon is equipped with a unique ability that will heal tamed or allied creatures at the cost of its own food stat. This can be done by accessing its radial menu to enable passive healing or can be used when ridden to manually trigger the heal. Any creatures within the AoE will begin to heal. The more creatures the Daedon heals at a time, the more food it will consume and it chows down on food like there's no tomorrow. And as of now, there's no better way to heal your tame creatures than the Daedon, which makes them an extremely important creature to tame. Any baby in a mate boosted female Procoptodon's pouch consumes less food and gets two times imprint bonus. This clip is a perfect example to showcase this. Here I have a baby Stego, not in the pouch, which when cared for only receives a 5% imprint affinity. However, the baby in the pouch will receive a 10% imprint affinity. Using this ability can save you a lot of food, time and hassle, and can give you a great head start in imprinting your babies when in their infant stage. The Uteranus boasts two unique raw abilities. The first one being the Intimidation Fear Roar. This roar will terrify wild or enemy creatures even when mounted by a player. Any affected creatures will receive a debuff, increasing damage taken and reducing damage dealt by up to 50% and at full fear will attempt to flee, ignoring any commands. This roar can also be used to scare out buried Pelovias. The second roar is the Courage Roar, which when used will boost the attack damage of any nearby tamed or allied creatures by 25% and reduces all income and damage they take by 20%. This makes the U around is very useful in large scale battles and the most important asset in the boss fight arena. The Beals of Bufo naturally create cemented pace when they consume small insects. Attacking bugs like the Meganura or Titana Murmur will yield between 0 and 20 cemented pace each. But the thing that makes the frog so important when playing the island map is the Swamp Cave. There are hundreds of Meganura and Titana Murmur that will spawn throughout the entirety of the cave. You can take your frog into this cave and come out rich with thousands and thousands of cementing paste. This makes the Beals of Bufo a very important creature to tame on the island map. The Dire Bear has a massive amount of utility going its way, and its special ability is extremely useful. And with its alternate attack, aka the Slap Attack, it can gather honey from beehives at three times the rate, without damage in the hive, and without any aggro from the bees inside. And it is the only rideable creature that the bees cannot dismount you from. This can make farming honey extremely easy, especially if you're not at the point of taming yourself a giant queen bee. And the best way I've found to stock up on honey is by making a bunch of primitive fishing rods. That way you can drag your honey on top of the fishing rods, giving it an unlimited spoil timer. And whenever you're in need of honey, all you have to do is just unequip the honey from the rod and you're good to go. Next up we have the Otter, a creature that is full of surprises. Being as they are a shoulder pet, they will give anything inside their inventory 50% weight reduction when on your shoulder. They can carry more than one of the same artifact in their own inventory. They are the only creature that can do this in the game. They provide a stacking insulation effect to nearby survivors. And of course, being as they're a shoulder pet, you can wear them around your neck like a scarf to keep you extra warm. Leveling the Otter's melee damage will increase the amount of insulation provided. Granted approximately 75 hyperfermic insulation and 34 high per thermic insulation per 100% melee damage, meaning that if you have enough otters in your base, they can incubate fertilized eggs for you. They also have the ability to collect silica pearls and rarely black pearls from fish. I must admit I've never used this strategy to gather silica pearls or black pearls and it's not worth risking the life of your otter just for a puny amount of silica pearls and black pearls. And we all know how hard otters are to find and tame, so they're better off kept safe and sound on your shoulder. Next up we have the aquatic submarine, the Basilosaurus, and there's a good reason why it's called the aquatic submarine. It has many abilities that will help keep the rider safe from danger. The Basilosaurus is immune to the Nidaria stun and dismount, the Electrophorus shock attack, and the Tusatufus grapple attack. They will also protect the rider from extreme temperatures, granting the player 562 hyperthermal protection and 562 hypothermal protection, and when at the ocean surface will rapidly regenerate its health. It will take small amounts of health damage when in the deeper parts of the ocean but it is very minimal considering how much health they have. They will also passively generate oil in their inventory, which will cap at 20, where you have to take it out for them to begin producing more. 
The Equus, in my opinion, is the best starter team you can ever tame in the game. The amount of utility they bring to the table is incredible. Once saddled, they can be used as a portable mortar and pestle with weight reduction for a wide variety of resources. They are equipped with a kick attack, which when used will deal three times its melee damage in Torpor. It is extremely good at knocking creatures out, so you'll be able to save on your tranks, albeit a slightly riskier way to do it, as there is more of a risk of killing the creature rather than knocking it out. Another great ability it has is being able to craft lassoes with the saddle. You can equip these to your hotbar and when riding the Equus you can use these to grab and pull conscious and unconscious creatures. They can even drag flyers the size of a Quetzal or Rhinia Naffa. These guys have saved plenty of unconscious Quetzals from drowning in my time. A creature's special ability list would not be complete without the Argentavis. Whenever the Argentavis bites or consumes a corpse, they will receive the Rapid Regeneration buff, boosting health regeneration and stamina regeneration, which can contribute to them staying in the air for longer. They are very well known to carry a wide variety of creatures in their talons. However, they can also carry smaller creatures in their beak, meaning you can carry up to three creatures at once, due to your player also being able to pick up smaller creatures. And finally, my favourite Argentavis ability, is going to be its weight reduction for a wide variety of heavy resources and that once saddled they can be used as a portable smithy. Due to having massive weight reduction for metal ingots and other heavy resources, this gives players the ability to craft expensive blueprints that they'd never be able to craft in a smithy or a beaver due to not having enough available slots or having enough weight. An Argentavis fully leveled in weight will not have this problem. The Stegosaurus is equipped with three different plate mode abilities, which when activated offer the Stegosaurus a variety of buffs and debuffs to attackers. Hardened plate mode will reduce incoming damage by 50% and is best for harvesting wood. Heavy plate mode will slow targets when hit by the Stegosaurus primary attack and is great for harvesting thatch. Sharpened plates will increase its armor penetration by 30% when attacking with the primary attack. This mode can be used to farm berries. All plate modes will protect the rider from being dismounted or by being picked by flyers. They are also equipped with a devastating attack which is the impale attack which can be used on any creatures below a drag weight of 550. After a target has been weakened once the stegosaurus is in range while aiming at the target you'll see a crosshair. When it turns red the attack is ready to use. Using the alternate attack will impale the target inflicting a type of bleed attack which will drain the victim's health at a rapid rate and instantly drain their stamina. These abilities make the stegosaurus extremely useful in PvP. The Mammoth is equipped with two extremely useful abilities, the first one being its Trunk Bellow. This will apply a debuff to any nearby hostile creatures or players, known as the Intimidated Debuff. Any targets will be affected for 15 seconds, reducing the damage output of any affected targets by 25%, which also includes any ranged attacks. This also negates the effect of bowlers and net projectiles that any Intimidated player uses. Of course, net projectiles aren't in the game yet, but it seems there's no changes here. This Trunk Bellow can also be used when the mammoth is stood in water, which will hydrate your survivor and give you a free shower. And the mammoth's second ability occurs when riding the passenger seat and playing the drums, where the passenger will play a mini game matching the sound of the beat. Every three successful rounds, the drum will give the ready for war buff to any allied players and the mounts they are riding. This effect will boost stamina regeneration and will be immune to the fear roar of the Uteranus. The Baryonyx is equipped with a good amount of combat abilities. They will heal ridiculously quickly when force-fed raw fish meat. They will also heal large chunks of their health when killing fish. The larger the fish, the more health they will heal. They do not possess an oxygen stat, making them a very versatile mount on land and in water. Adding to this with the ability to jump and due to their slim build can fit inside every cave on the island map. But their most powerful ability is their deadly tail stun attack, which can only be used underwater and can stun a wide variety of creatures for the duration of 10 seconds. This can even be used on alpha megalodons, making them easy kills, and can make taming the basilosaurus a much easier task. Your barrier will take care of the mobs and mantas no problem at all. The Mesopithecus is the second and final shoulder pet I wanted to put on the list. As they are a shoulder pet, anything you put inside them will have 50% weight reduction when on your shoulder. Their ability to throw poo off your shoulder can be extremely useful in many scenarios. Anything hit by their poop throw will be slowed for 10 seconds. However, when they hit hostile players, not only will they be slowed, but they won't be able to use any healing items for the duration of the debuff. They can be an absolute lifesaver when getting yourself into sticky situations. The Mesopithecus also has the unique ability to open thatch and wood doors from the inside. They just need a way in. Whistling to attack target or having them follow you towards the door will allow them to open the door for you. 
clever girl. And finally, to top off the video at number 20 is going to be the Rhinia Naffa, and they do have an array of abilities at their disposal. When sap is inside its inventory, it will convert one sap to one resin every five seconds. Resin is an important ingredient in it being able to use its abilities. It is equipped with three ranged attacks. The needle attack which consumes one resin per shot and does 75 damage. The rocket attack which consumes three resin per shot and does 100 damage. This can also be used as a homing like rocket. And finally the sticky bomb, which consumes 5 resin per shot and does 300 damage on impact. Affected targets take slight health damage, will be slowed, and at full coverage will be temporarily immobilized. The Rhinian Alpha is equipped with a screen, which similar to the Uteranus Feral, can scare medium to large sized creatures for a short duration of time. They have resin armor, which will consume 1 resin every minute, and reduces all incoming damage. This is not half as strong as it used to be, as it just got nerfed in a recent update. It can land on water, can quickly glide across it or even submerge themselves. They are the only flyer that can do this. They do have an oxygen stat so be wary of that. They can also carry a wide variety of larger creatures that no other flyer can carry, including a variety of structures, moving them around your base or to wherever you need them. Moving structures will cost one resin every 30 seconds. And that is going to be the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed it and please if you did enjoy it do leave a like, share, comment and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it and it would really help me out. And just to mention I may be missing in action for a little bit as i do have to send my pc away to get it repaired which really sucks but anyway if i don't catch you before christmas merry christmas and a happy new year ho 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 and i'll catch you all in the next one take care goodbye